Welcome to Inspire, the Angel Flores podcast, where you'll be inspired, equipped, and entertained. Okay, AJ, thank you for coming on. Thanks for uh, agreeing to do this. We met probably six, eight months ago, maybe. Eight months ago. And uh, as we started talking, I was like, there is more to this dude than meets the eye. And so I want to, let's just get into it. We'll start out with your story. Where were you born? Where'd you grow up? That kind of thing. Um, well, so I was born in Greeley. Um, pretty much. I was here and then I think within like a few months, man, we moved to Texas. Okay. And I was in Texas for a little bit. We're in Texas. Uvalde. Oh, so that's, a, yeah. yeah so my whole family's from Uvalde. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad's. Every brown person in tech in Greeley either has family in Texas or New Mexico. Yeah. Like that's how right. it is. There's migration patterns or something, but yeah. Yeah. No, my family's all from there. My grandma's um, originally from right there on the border, right okay. there. My grandpa. Eagle Pass or? Um, what is that? Del Rio right there? Del Rio, yeah. Yeah, that whole area right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're all from there. Braxton. Okay. Um, Curve. How'd your family end up here? Um, You know what? That's a good question. I think, well, no, I, I actually do know the answer to that. So my grandpa was just a real, um, he was a, he was, he was something else. He did a lot of crazy things to my, my grandma. Okay. And uh, my dad has eleven siblings, and uh, his oldest grandpa sister had a lot of love to give. Oh man, but yeah, I mean, more than he probably should have. Should have. <laughs> um, but he was something else. Like he was very abusive. He was very, yeah. um, like he did things. I've heard stories about him. We were never allowed to see him. Oh wow. We would go there, and and my they have like six houses on this block on Elizabeth Street, mm-hmm. and. My my aunts, my my tias, and everybody was like, "What? Don't go there. Stay away from there. Stay yeah. away from there. We would never see them." So the whole family lives in these six houses. Nah, there's there's this. I mean, they're all over that city, but like, there's like one part of that city, Valley. If you're yeah. from there, you know Elizabeth Street. Okay, a big tree in the middle of the of, of the road and everything. All right. I just I, had Johnny Ariola on a couple of weeks. He's his is coming out in. From Palomino or the Los Palominos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He he's knows from all, there. Yeah, yeah. He knows and he knows all my family too. Okay. But um, so yeah, we I've only met my grandpa probably a handful of times. All right, is know? he still alive or he just passed away mm. recently? So and none of us even went to the funeral. Like it was crazy. It was just... so, but he did a lot of things to my grandma and, and my my oldest Dia, and she was like she she just told me the story about a month ago, but when she was like twenty three or twenty four, she went there in the middle of the night, woke up my grandma, made her pack, and they left. And she had met some guy from out here. And then I have a deal that's been out in Greeley too. Mm-hmm. Um, and a couple other family members. But she had met some guy from Erie. So they were living out here. Mm. So she brought my grandma out and just basically saved her. Like, wow. Because it was just so bad. It was abusive. And it was bad. Like, I, I was, I've heard stories like of what the things that he's done. And it's just crazy. So something's, something's wrong with a guy like that. Yeah. yeah so they sure. actually went to Erie and then they went to Island Grove. So. Oh, okay. My dad and everybody kind of, that's where they all grew up over there. All right. You know, went to Billy Martinez. And, in the Island Grove Apartments. Yeah, in that whole little area. And then, so you grew up. I didn't grow up over there. I, so, I, I, uh, so I was born here and then um, we went out there, came back. Well, then we went to, I was in Yuma, Arizona. Okay. I went to like preschool, kindergarten in Yuma, mm-hmm. Arizona. I think that was just because my dad was into some stuff. You know okay. what I mean? Um, so we went to Yuma. And then from Yuma, we went to Minnesota. See, when you say... My dad was into some stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know what you mean, but go ahead, keep going. No, so well, my dad was just, you know, my yeah, dad. so was, many stories like no, that. So my dad is just, you know, he was very, uh, um, he was just into into the life, you know, mm. street life. And okay. Just getting himself into trouble. Gotcha, um, yeah. I don't know a lot about him in a sense because as I got older, me and him just separated from each other. Went your own ways, yeah. Yeah. Like is he, he still around? Or? No, he died. Oh, okay. He died. When I was, I was what, 17, oh, he wow. died. So, and then I never met my mom. So I don't know nothing about her. Really? Yeah. So that's unusual, man. Usually it's the mom that sticks around and. Yeah, no, she was, she was, she was gone. We went to Yuma. We went to Minnesota. That's when she left. I was like four years old, I think. Okay. Um, we came home one day and there was a note on the table and I was the last of her. Wow. Yeah. So. How many siblings? Just me and my brother. Okay. So, but then, yeah, we stayed in so Minnesota. Your dad for, raised you guys mm-hmm. and then he'd passed. 
Well, he, I mean, he, he raised us to a point, you mm-hmm. know, and then I think I was like in fifth grade when I started getting in trouble. Okay. And then that's when they started, mess- they started sending me and my brother to different places. So we got sent to Texas, we got sent to Minnesota, we got sent here, sent there. Trying to straighten you out. Trying, trying to. to like my who son, was doing this? Grandma was then? No, my grandma. <clears throat> no. So my dad, like I said, my dad was always into things. You know, he was always um, just into like street stuff, you know. Had his own demons. Yeah, he had his own, yeah, he had his own things that he was trying to figure out. So my, like I said, he had 11 siblings. So six of them were, I think six of them were, I have six deals. So they would just come in and take these try and straighten these boys out yeah because we were just on the man I, man in fifth grade I, it was bad i slammed somebody's head on it it was bad it was it was really bad mm-hmm. you know and so they were like you gotta go for and if i was trying to create an environment <laughs> that would create a kid that was out of control i'd i would do that single parent and the parent that's there is not that engaged yeah, it was just, and you guys were on your kind of on your own raising yourselves. Yeah, it was a trip because we were living in the deltas at the time, and uh, my dad yeah, from Greeley. The deltas are a big what side village? complex. What side village? On the west side, east side of town, east side. generally low income, right? right. So yeah, yeah, section yeah. eight. Yeah, we were living over there, man. And I remember it was just like my dad, my family is like real into the gangs. You know? mm-hmm. um, it's weird because my my real mom, even though I don't know her, I know some of her family, and um, one in particular, he's kind of the the reason why there's gangs, one of the main reasons why there's gangs, a specific gang in Greeley. Okay. And um, so he was always real close with my dad. And that was always around. And mm. so that environment was just like. That was just it. That was it. That's all we knew. Mm. From the get. So mm. Alcohol, drugs, gangs. Okay. So, that's so you're a little kid growing up. Yep. That's all we've seen. Gang life. Yeah. It's, it's hard for, you know, I think it's hard for people to understand, like, if you're in a gang, why don't you leave the gang? Well, it's more than just being in the gang. Yeah. It's your, it's, it's my cousins. It's my family. Yeah. It's my whole support system. I, where would I go? No, I, and you're right. I, I get it with the kids that I work with now. And they say the same thing. AJ, I walk outside. That's all I see. Mm. I walk outside and there's, they're shooting down the street. What am I supposed to do? Mm-hmm. You know? And so yeah. it's like, you just, you get accustomed to it. And then you start, well, why? And all you know is, well, they have red on and we have blue on, or I have blue on, or vice versa. Right, right, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. but there's really no reason, you know, because right. what's that color? You know, it's a, it's just a color. <laughs> it's just, a, and it's crazy because if you just go back a couple of years, like I remember being in like fourth, fifth mm-hmm. at, East, at East Memorial, going to Chapla, growing up with a group of kids, and then as I got older, now we don't. We're not that. Yeah, we're, we're enemies because of who their family was yeah. or who they were connected to. You guys separated it some, and at used some to point. GI Joes or whatever yeah. football at lunchtime, and now we're enemies. Yeah, yeah. and I just learned that from, and, and it's crazy because we learned that so young. I remember, and like I said, growing up in the Deltas, it's like it's all we ever seen, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and it was just like, whoa, we don't get along with these fools over here. Why not? We just don't. We hate those we guys. Don't. And that's what tripped me out, right? I used to box right when we were kids at the Redarte Center, so you'd go from over there to over here. And all you these boxed when you were growing up. Yeah, we did. Boxed. I ever tell you I boxed? I used to box tomatoes, carrots, onions. <laughs> the anyway. best jab in the world, right? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I do have a nice jab. AJ <laughs> has complimented it. It's kind of legendary. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no. So we grew up boxing too. Like that's something that we we got into young. We got that. We actually started that in Minnesota. Okay. So when we were in Minnesota, we did that. We also did taekwondo. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So and everybody wanted to be like Bruce Lee. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> you know what I mean? Numb chucks, yellow outfit. Yeah, all that. Yeah. 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 So then you're growing up, you're middle school, things are starting to go south, they're moving you around, you and your brother. Mm-hmm. Then what? Well, I, just more and more trouble, you know. Mm-hmm. The we just like as we got so in, the first time you got arrested. How old were you? I was in fifth grade. I, I did something at the school. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, they they arrested him. They arrested me and took me home. Did they handcuff a fifth grader? Yeah, I so it was bad, man. Like it was so this so there was a girl, and it's so it's so bad because I Wait see her, man. No, no, it's it's funny because I see her now, and when I first seen her, where she, um, I won't say where she works at because people probably know who she is. Okay, but when I first walked into this place, <laughs> everybody later, yeah, <laughs> everybody has to go there, okay. and I had to go there one day, and I seen her and I recognized her, and it's probably been. Since then, since I seen her and I felt so bad and 
You're talking she, about 30 years or so it's so, been. Yeah. yeah, and she recognized me. I seen it right when she, and she got up and everything walked away. So I came back, you know, my life changed. We'll get to that later, but mm-hmm. and I apologized to her. And I was like, look, you know, I was just, I was young. I was, yeah. You know, and she was in tears and everything. She told me flat out, she's like, I hated you forever. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. what you did to me that day. And so what happened was she was young and her family was from, from a different like neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And she was telling me, my brothers are going to get you. My brothers are going to get you. Whatever, chick, you know. And I'm like, handle it then. When you, if you're familiar with East Memorial, mm-hmm. remember how you have that long path where the basketball court is? Right, yeah. Right? Well, back then, there was nothing but cornfield. And then you had that one section of houses, and then it led you to the Deltas. Now it's like a swimming pool. Swimming all pool. It's all more houses. Yeah. Parks. I was yeah. all uh, cornfields. Cornfields back then. So I was walking through there, and then, sure enough, there they were. Mm. So the next day... I'm like, what the heck's your problem, chick? You know what I mean? Like, these guys are older. They were, you know, I'm in fifth grade. I don't know how old that is, 10 years old. Yeah, maybe 10. These fools were like 16, 17 years old. Mm-hmm. They got me. Beat you up. Mass, you know? I was like, dang. Went, saw her the next day. Were you a small kid? Were you a chubby kid? Were you a no, big I was, kid? I was a Mexican kid, so You're just small normal. and ate yeah. a lot of beans and <laughs> a lot of tortillas. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, butter tortillas all day long. So, I... Me and her had words. She said that she was going to get her brothers again, and she had long hair. Mm. I just remember I cut it all off. Oh, wow. You know? and it was just bad from there. Mm-hmm. It, it sucks because it's like, it was probably the most dumbest thing I ever did. Mm. And then when I seen her, the effect that it had on her. Right, yeah. You never think about that stuff, right? Sure, yeah. Hindsight's twenty twenty. But she, like I said, she um, she was grateful that I apologized to her, and you could just tell it just really there was so much a weight off of her man sure, yeah. it was a trip i though. imagine seeing you had to have been like oh my god oh, dude we were both in tears that day it was crazy it was That's it was cool. a crazy experience and now when we see each other she comes and gives me a hug mm. you know and then she knows what i do now with the kids and all yeah. that and she actually uh, for a while was bringing her son to the gym oh wow you know? he just grew out of boxing though mm-hmm. but um but you you take two kids and i'm not excusing what you did right no and not a at all kid made a decision right but you take two kids who grow up in trauma mm-hmm and their lives interact intersect and it's bad yeah and those things mark you you know it becomes a part of who you are for both of you like right. you carried re- regret and you felt like it you know it's terrible it's something man the the relief that forgiveness yeah can bring yeah for sure i mean that's you did you said i'm sorry and she forgave you yeah wow that's cool it was a trip man so 10 years old you got arrested yeah we got arrested and then we um, i got kicked out of school and so that was kind of why I got sent to Texas. Mm. Went to Texas. So the family's like, this guy's out of control. Kind of. When yeah. my dad was out of, like, he was out of control. So I remember him being in jail. We had no power. So mm. we were running the extension cords to the neighbors oh, wow. to have a lamp in the house. One of my dad's homies, who's still a good friend of mine now, he worked at KFC back then over on 8th Avenue. Mm-hmm. He'd bring his KFC every single day wow. while my dad was in jail. So that's all we ate. So Damn. like it was a trip, man. Like, I, I saw it to this day. I won't eat KFC. Like, I just it's it's like little things like that. Yeah, I'm just yeah, like yeah. I won't do it. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. So your brother's younger or older? My brother's younger. Okay. How many yeah. years? Just a year. All right. So, so you guys are grown up. Yeah, we're tight. That's, I mean, we've always been super tight. But yeah, man, it was it was bad. So that when that happened, I got sent to Texas. My brother got sent to Minnesota. Mm. So they separated us. They I don't know why they thought that would do us good, but he went there. I went there, and then I just got in trouble there. I just hooked up with some people and we were just on the same path and like attracts like. Yeah. So, and then cops got involved out there. Some, I don't even remember what I did, but my auntie was just like, nope, we're not having that here. So they sent me back and, mm-hmm. and it was just like a constant cycle, man. Like, yeah. and then by that time, like 12, 13, 14, like that's when we started like really you know, carrying flags and mm-hmm. blue rags and stuff like that. And now it was different. Started claiming Sudanio. Sudanio, all that stuff. That's where we come from. And so mm-hmm. it was just, it was on and cracking after that, mm-hmm. you know? So then when did you, um, <clears throat> when did you do your first real time in jail? Um, well, when I was a kid, I got, you know, you get committed. Uh-huh. You know, so you get committed. And I can't remember. I don't know what it's like now, mm-hmm. you know, but you do... I think committed is like nine months back then. Okay. Or six six or nine months. Mm-hmm. So they commit you for that. So I did one of those. Okay. 
Where? Um, just right here. In Platte Valley? Yeah. You go to Platte. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was in Texas, I went to some place. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but they kind of had a similar system. Mm-hmm. Because I got sent to Texas once and I got sent back again. Okay. And then my auntie, I don't know why she kept bringing me back. <laughs> and then she would just kick me out. She put me on a Greyhound, man. When, uh, the, the first time I went there, I remember waking up. She, and I was, she was like, pack your bag. Why? I'm going. Can't. I was like, jeez. I didn't even know. Mm-hmm. She put me on a Greyhound. Didn't even know where I was I was, was coming back here. Went to Denver. Didn't even know. Dang. You said, <laughs> how'd you get to Greeley? So uh, I, I, somebody who picked, I forgot who picked me up, but Just someone, so you didn't even know where you were going. Oh, in my, I think she it was get on that bus. Yeah. I think one of my other theas picked me up because she had just moved back. She was living in Minnesota and she had just moved back and she picked me up. And I think I stayed with her for a while, mm. you know, and then she was living in Fort Collins for a while. Then my dad moved to Fort Collins, you know, and that's where he ended up staying until he died, mm. you know? So then we were kind of like back and forth from there. So mm. and Fort Collins was a whole nother thing because they didn't, they had Mexicans and they had like some people that were gangbanging, but they weren't like Greeley gangbangers. Mm-hmm. Like me and my brother just. How old were you about that time? Mm, I was like 14. Okay. 13, 13. I was like in seventh grade. So wow. I just remember going to seventh grade. That was my first year there. Mm-hmm. You know, I went to seventh grade. And I went to like three or four different schools that first year. Wow. And just getting in trouble. I remember I went to Weber. And then I ended up at Blevins at the very end. It was just they were just they weren't ready for me and my brother. Right. And my brother was he started know, getting into trouble ready for you and your brother. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just different, you know? Like uh-huh. that's what people don't understand. It's like, you know, you tell people these stories and they they trip out on it, you know, and mm-hmm. it's like like how is it really like that? And I'm like, you know, when you look back at it, I'm a parent now and then I work with kids every day. Mm-hmm. We got nobody at home. This we got nobody yeah. showing us how to do this life thing. Right. You know, nobody telling us like go ride bikes and shoot marbles and do this. Hell no. They were like, get chicks. You know what I mean? Put this rag in your pocket. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? That's all we knew. There was a vacuum. So, boys learn to be men by watching other men. Right. Right? That's all we saw. And so, without a strong, stable dad Mm -hmm. to teach you how to be a man, there's a vacuum now. Right. You have to fill it with something. Yeah. And you're not being nurtured. I'm doing some therapy on you right now. And you're not being (laughs) nurtured by a mom. Right. So you're looking for that kind of. And, and I always, too. I went, when I went to counseling later in life, I, I found out that that was like a huge deal. Mm. I learned how to deal with all that stuff. Mm. And I, I think having no mom for me uh-huh. was more because my dad hated me ever since I was a kid, man. He like did things to me that, I mean, the abuse that he did to me, mm-hmm. you know, like that was, it was just out of, it was just, he should have been in prison forever for the things that he just did. Just for what he did to you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my brother. I mean, mm-hmm. My brother has scars all over his face. I got mm-hmm. scars on my body because of what my dad did to me. You know what I mean? And so it's like, but it, that was normal too. Like, that's what's crazy, you know? Like, like so all my homies got their... It wasn't normal. It was normal. It was, it was normal. Typical for you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because looking back, you look at that. That's not say, normal. That's not normal. Right? It was normal in that, but in you that didn't know. setting. Yeah. You don't know any different. No. It's, there's a point in life when you come to come to a place when you look around and say, not everybody grew up like this. Right, you know what I mean. That you and really that's, do, and that's yeah. true. Like, because yeah. I, I argue with my son now about that. But yeah, no, I grew. I remember all of my homies. Like, oh, my dad hit me today again, or we got into a fight again, or this or that. And it's like that was just how it was, you know. And then like how you said, like on the flip side, most people had no dad, just a mom. We didn't have a mom. And like I found that as I started getting older into my teenagers, like I wanted to hurt every chick I ever met mm. because like there was nothing. That's all I ever wanted. I always, in my head, felt like if my mom was there, my dad wouldn't have done what he did to me. Mm. That's what I always thought. Mm, yeah, you know? she would have protected you. She would have protected you. Down, yeah. And then my dad always told me that one of the reasons, like there was so many times where he would be like, I got the worst of it because I looked like her. Oh, wow. And so I like grew this hatred for her. Mm. And I was just, you know, like I wanted her, but then at the same time, I'm like, F her. Like, yeah, I'm glad, you know? Glad she's gone. Yeah, yeah but at, at the same time, I, I got this like. See, and even think about you know, that you saying I wanted to hurt women, right? In a healthy family, right? You you learn how to treat a woman by watching your, your dad, dad treat, treat your, your mom, mom. Yeah. good, right. right? And so then, young man will look for what he sees in his mom. They say that's a joke. You marry your mom, 
Mm -hmm. or a young lady will look for a man that reminds her of, of her dad. Right. And that's healthy. That's how it's supposed to be. But if, but if that's all missing, yeah, dude, if I was trying to create a chaotic story, right. Those, I mean, there it is. Yeah. And it's so easy to just look at a kid like that, walking through the Greeley mall, pants, sagging his pants or whatever. Right. And be like, man, that kid's a bum. Look at that kid. He needs to get his life together. Right. But you have no idea what's gone into creating that kid. Right. Or what's missing in that kid. Yeah, that's no interesting. No, that's real stuff. So then you, first time you got arrested as an adult. Well, I wasn't an adult. So when I got my re first real charges, um, so you fast forward some time, banging, slanging, got into slanging dope, okay. you know, I needed money. Mm -hmm. um, my first job was at working at CSU in the kitchen, you know, but that was only like nine bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. So it just wasn't enough. So. We knew all the people that had everything. So yeah. I start again, there's that community role model. Community role model. <laughs> he has a nice car. Right. Beautiful women, whatever. Right. Yeah. So I got into slanging. Um, I wasn't no like um, Pablo Escobar, but. Slanging is a Hispanic colloquialism for dealing drugs. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what is that? Uh, you got the dictionary and then you got, there's one that people call, I don't even oh, know. The that. Urban Dictionary. Urban Dictionary. Yeah, yeah, there yeah, you yeah. go. But, um, like, I wasn't on Pablo Escobar, but we were pushing weight. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a I had a good connect that was dropping me off, you know, enough. Uh -huh. that I was doing You were my, living in Fort Collins still at the time? I was back and forth now. Okay. Because I had moved out of my house for my dad when I was 16. Um, I had to leave him. You know, I got to the point where the abuse stopped. I stood up for myself. We got into a fight. I'm out of here. Mm. You know what I mean? Now it's two men in the house. It's not. Yeah. Boy, yeah, yeah, and I remember you telling me a story. I you remember the, the squirrels in the. Oh right, right. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's how my when you told me that story, my dad. I I look at my dad yeah. now. Uh huh. After you told me that story, and I'm like, man, I wonder if that's how he felt. Mm. You know what I mean? Because he had no role model. He had nothing to show him. Yeah. So he saw you guys coming up. Yeah. So there's this story that Floyd Mayweather's son. No, it's um, Roy Jones Jr. Yeah, Roy Jones he Jr. He shares, and basically the idea is. When he was a kid, he would go hunting for squirrels. Right. And sometimes he would kill a squirrel that was a male that had no testicles. Mm -hmm. And he always thought, that is weird. Right. And they, when he grew up, he learned that in the squirrel kingdom, males, there's, so there's alpha squirrels. There's alpha everything. I didn't know there was, I never thought of alpha squirrels, but there's an alpha squirrel that has a bunch of females. And if one of his children is a male, he'll bite the testicles off. Right. Mm -hmm to keep that that male from growing up and threatening his position. Right. So it's, a, it's I, there, I have so many questions. <laughs> like, how does he know the <laughs> testicles? I mean, who taught him? <laughs> like, I just have so many questions about that, right? But it's a thing in the animal kingdom. And so Roy, Roy Jones said that his dad was like that, that he, he always had to be the big guy right. in the gym. He, he would never acknowledge anybody else getting better because that threatened his position or whatever, right? Right. So that was the story that we talked about. Yeah. 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 And, and there are, there's two kinds of, I think, trainers. There's guys that are like that, that always have to be the best in the room. And, you know, they're never going to let everybody else get, not going to teach them all their secrets or whatever. And then there's guys who are secure and just want to teach and want to yeah. see how far this guy can go. And so, yeah, that was a conversation we had. So, yeah. yeah. Interesting. So you felt like your dad was kind of like that, insecure. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Just because, you know, when you look back at it, it's like, man, I hold, I held so much hatred for that dude. Like mm. he did so many things to me, man. Like she stabbed me when I was like 13, you know, like, and it was bad, you Just know, that sentence, bud, that, that <laughs> my dad stabbed me. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. That's he, it, it was a trip. But again, yeah. like when I, when, you know, I know this sounds messed up, but it's like, that was like normal. Like I used to get woke up from him hitting me. I remember sitting on the couch, just passed out mm -hmm. and just him hitting me, waking him up and telling me to get out the house. Why? Get the fuck out of my house. Mm. All right, cool. I'm out. Mm. And we would just have to leave. My little brother in the middle of the night. That happened so many times as kids. Wow. Like over and over. Yeah. I remember calling my dear like, yo. And and she would be like, why? Like, what did you do? I didn't do shit. I was sleeping. I'm, I'm a 12. kid. I'm 12, 13. My yeah. brother's 12, 11 years old. What do you mean? What did we do? Yeah. You know, we're just living our life. Mm. We'd come home from school and the door would be locked and he'd be right there in the window. You could see him and he wouldn't open the door for us. So we would have nowhere to go. <laughs> We lived in Fort Collins. We had no family there. Nothing to eat. Nothing. So we would just have to be on the street. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
there's a CSU where they used to play football. They tore the stadium down now. Right, yeah. But there used to be two big old rocks back there. And um, they were flat. It was just so random. Mm -hmm. That's where me and my brother used to go. We would go sleep there wow. because we had nowhere else to go. Mm. We, had, we didn't know nobody. Mm -hmm. you know? But it's like, I remember people asking, like my theas and stuff, well, what would you guys do? It's nothing. But even if we did... I'm a kid. You're the father. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I trip out on that. You know, the yeah. things that he did. Especially as a father now. Yeah. Imagining doing that to your kids. Yeah. Just locking the door and saying, I just oh, don't. And I, it's a trip, man. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, I had to get out of there. You know, I just, the moment I stood up to him, you know, it was. So, you're out on your own. On my own. Started slanging, banging. I was really into that. And then I got arrested. I got into, we got so deep into it. Um, I was making trips to El Paso. Oh, wow. Um, one of my family one of my family members hooked me up with some dudes that were from there um and then they were connected to something else over there i don't like saying those names just because no you could say them but <laughs> <laughs> yeah but the last uh, thing i need is that so yeah don't yeah. say any names <laughs> but um that was it got serious you know mm -hmm. then it got like i said i wasn't no pablo but i was around other people that were and like I was, I was getting enough. And then one day coming back from El Paso, um, I, we stopped at a hotel and, um, I, I knew somebody had told on me because I walked out the next morning and this dude was just sitting on a, in the car, mm -hmm. you know, he's just like dangling his, um, handcuffs. Oh, <laughs> so I was just Good like, morning. yeah, Hey, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, that was it. So, you know. That, so they I, arrested you in Texas? No. It was, was here. It was in Colorado. Oh, okay. It was down south. Mm -hmm. um, but that happened. I was 17. Yeah, my son was my son was born. My, she was pregnant with my daughter. And, then, and you were 17 years old? Yeah, and then I had some other girl pregnant too. So I just remember <coughs> like. A lot of love to give también, huh? Yeah. I was. Yeah, it was crazy. So four kids in three years. Or like a two and a half year period. My three daughters are like within like a few months of each other. Okay. You know, so like three daughters. That's a lot. That's punishment. <laughs> God, they yeah. say God has a sense of humor. He and does, man. He's like, here. Yeah. <laughs> Put some women in your life. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I got arrested for that. And then, um, and from there, it just it took a charge, you know, because. So you were charged, obviously, as an adult. I was in charge as an adult at first, and then I got in trouble again. Mm. So I was boxing at the time, mm -hmm. and I was able to get out um, kind of be from the help from the boxing. Mm -hmm. um, I was pretty good at boxing. I could have went somewhere with it. Uh -huh. so I was doing like, was it, like the, they didn't call it the national team back then, but I was doing that, and they sent us home for three months. If I would have just been good, it would have helped me like resolve my situation. Mm. But in that three months, I went home and I got in trouble again. Mm. I got like into some fights and some stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then from there, that's when it happened where they were like, where well, you're going to go, you're not going to be an adult, or a child no more. Now you're going to be an adult. I had like six, five months or so, six months before I turned 18. And then I was gone. And then from there, I, uh, you know, going back to like some of my, I have a cousin from my real mom. Like I said, he uh, he was like the guy, you know. He was that guy, and um, not only just here in Greeley, mm -hmm. but everywhere. Okay. Like, and then in the prisons, he was that guy. Like he, you know, because back then, and even a little bit now, I'm, I think now, but I know back then I could speak for that. Like in the '90s and the early 2000s, he um, California is like the motherland. Okay. Right. That's what they call it. But we're from Colorado, so why do we have to answer to that? Mm. So he's talking about the gang structure. Yeah, the the, the gangs the, are founded in California. In California, yeah. From California. what we belong to, yeah. Like there's other gangs, right? Yeah, and there's other, if you want to call them like brown gangs, right? Yeah. But the ones that we're part Let's of. Let's name some of them. Just kidding. <laughs> and uh, well, I mean, it's it's pretty easy. Right. Greeley's easy. You got North and South. Right. That's it. Back then, right mm -hmm. now, you got some other things, but. Back then, it was north and south. Okay. You go to where my family is in Minnesota, Chicago, and all that. Mm -hmm. Now you got Latin Kings. You got, all, you know, GDs. Latin Kings are big out of, like, Chicago, right? Chicago, yeah. yeah. Minnesota, all that area. You got a million different things. They don't go off of colors. We go off of colors. And it was red and blue. That was it. Mm -hmm. So, 
my cousin was real big on that. He's sending letters. <clears throat> How long did you get sentenced for? Um, was it? I think it was like seven years, eight years. Okay, so it wasn't that long. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> you're you're seventeen years old, eighteen years old. Yeah, eight years. Yeah, it's almost half of your life at the time. When you think about that, right? It's yeah. about half the life you've lived. You know, it's a little less, but it's close to half the life you've lived. Right. Definitely all the adult years times two. Right. And then, so talk to me about what it sound, what it felt like the day that you're in court and they said guilty, eight years. What did you, what were you thinking? <clears throat> well, and I know you, that guy is not the guy that I'm sitting in front of now. Yeah. And so, so when I look back at it, it's hard because that was so long ago. You know, and if I had a mentality, I don't remember exactly how, but if I, because I see the people now, mm -hmm. I see my son, you know, I see the people that he got involved with a little bit when he started getting in trouble. I don't remember being like them, but if I did act cocky and like, oh, what, 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 I was dumb because so you just said whatever. Yeah. But it, at the same, you know, on the other hand, I do know this. I wasn't too worried because I knew that. I had family. Mm. I had friends. I knew I wasn't going to. This is just part of life. This is the. This happens. This happens. This is just that road. Yeah. So we went and <clears throat> some things happened and I ended up in CSP. That, and then. What's both, that? Colorado State Penitentiary. Yeah. That, and then you, that's the, that's the um, 23 hour lockdown. Okay. So Where was that? Were you in Canyon, Canyon City? Yeah. So Canyon City is the <clears throat> state prison in Colorado. No, that's a city, and then there's like a bunch of prisons in there. Right, right, yeah. But Canyon City ha houses all the yeah. major prisons in Colorado, or I guess a, a lot of a them. lot of them. Yeah, Supermax is in Buena Vista, I think. But that's like a federal. That's in Florence. Florence. Yeah. Federal so you got prison. state, and then you got privates. All right. And there's a, a bunch lot of, of those, yeah. and the privates are more. You only got a handful of states. Okay. Right, and those are mostly over there, and then all the privates are scattered all the way around for rich folks to get more rich. Mm -hmm. you know, legal slavery so mm, interesting we can talk really, about that in a minute it is so look it up <laughs> so the, okay so then you get sentenced to you're in canyon city yes yeah, so i go through there just if you're from colorado and you hear that someone went to canyon city that's big time <laughs> you're like is it though like because i don't look at it like that everybody around me never did let me you know ask, i mean let me ask ben ben <laughs> Ben says yes. Right. <laughs> but I guess it, like in the environment that we were in. Right. Yeah. It was nothing. It was just whatever. Was I know whatever. 10 people there. Right. It's whatever. Right. Right. And that's and how that's, you were thinking. And that's why I tell you, like when, when you first approached me, you're like, let's talk about this. This is what interests you. I'm like, it's, it's so many people put so much emphasis on that. Uh huh. You know what I mean? They glorify it. They, that's like the rite of passage. And it's mm. like, Hell no. You know what I mean? Mm. Because when you get there and you're taking a shower in front of six other dudes and they're looking at you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're over there doing what they do and they're looking at you doing it. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's nothing. No place to be. Yeah. No. You know what I mean? You, what was you your go, first day like? That. Oh, wow. You know, like you you realize it's like. You're 18 years old. Yeah, 17. I hadn't turned 18 yet. And you're already an adult. And so it's like. That. It's, it just got real. huh? It just got real, real. Mm -hmm. You know? And then, and then you go there and you're just in four walls. You know, literally where me and you are here to the mm -hmm. wall. Yeah. Could you touch the sides? That's a little bit more in there, but it, it that's it. Though. Not like, much more though. Oh, I mean, it's like, that's it. That's, you know, you're, that's all you, and that's, it's real now. Like it's now, what are you made of? Because now you're stuck in your thoughts. Mm, interesting. You, know, you got no homies around. You got no, had nothing. you ever had a time in your life when you were, Alone with your thoughts. No. And that's what I'm saying. That's scary. Most people don't. We, we no. distract ourselves even today with our phones. You can't stand in line in 7-Eleven yeah. for two minutes without being on your phone. And back like then, we were out and about. We were mm -hmm. Everywhere. Just trying to you know, hustle. Kill time. Do something. Now you're just stuck. All those things, you know. And that's the worst, mm -hmm. you know. So you do, you know, 18 months of that. Imagine that. They changed the laws now where you can only do so much of that. Mm -hmm. Back then it was whatever. I got a homie that did six years straight in there. He's he's out now. And he's still not right. Okay. So what what for those of you guys that might not follow that, what AJ is describing is he got to prison because you were a gang member mm -hmm. and you were connected to gang leaders, 
you got put in solitary confinement. Yeah. 23 hours a day in a room by yourself. So people go insane in that environment. Right. And so you, you just, so now you're saying, you know, someone who did six years like that. Six years straight. 23 hours a day by themselves. Yeah. Oh, in yeah. the 90s, mid 90s. And I hear it was worse then. You know, like it got better slowly, 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 you know? Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's crazy. I mean, they say everyone in Supermax is insane because they're all like, yeah, yeah, by themselves all the time. Mm -hmm. it gets, it's, it's just different, you know? So, what kind of, what did you think? Like, I mean, you, you had to look around and say, okay, so life is not going the way. No, so I did be. that little bit of stint there, but then I got out <laughs> 18 months. Yeah. And then um, I was lucky I got sent to Utah. Okay. So, um, they sent some people out to Utah and I got lucky in a sense because it was so bad here, especially then in the late nineties that mm -hmm. like the gang stuff was just crazy. You know, early two thousands. Mm -hmm. It was, it was in different. prison. You mean, or yeah, just everywhere? Just everywhere. everywhere, yeah. everywhere. It's, it's bad now, but it wasn't that like back then it was, mm -hmm. it was I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. There were people wild west. Yeah. You know, getting so, killed all the time. All the time. And, yeah. So then I you hear go, people say now, Greeley doesn't have a gang problem compared to the way it was. No, they're full of shit. Yeah. That's, and we'll get to that. Like, okay. that's what I'm dealing with now, mm -hmm. you know? But it's just different. It, it looks different. It's not, it's not your textbook, you know, this is what you look for and this is obvious. It's not like that no more. Okay. But yeah, so we got to, you get to, get to Utah and now it's like a daycare and it's cool and you get good food and. So they you transferred know, you to a different prison. Yeah. Are there gang members there or no? Not yet. Like there was a few in Utah that thought they were, but Utah was nothing. Like, so that was nothing. But then they brought people in from California. Mm -hmm. And that's when the problems happened again because, well, we're from California. Mm -hmm. So what? Uh, <laughs> we're all in here in Utah now. Yeah. You know, well, we're from, a, you know, mm -hmm. we're from, a, they call it, you know, the mother, the motherland. And I'm, yeah. I don't care where you're from. You know, it no, was bad. Talking. And I'm your boss. Yeah. And that's what it turns into, you know, mm -hmm. you got a automatic, you know? Yeah. It's, who are you fool? Like, yeah. no, it just, it got bad. Where in Utah? Um, it's just north of like Salt Lake. Okay. So, so it's still, you're still in prison, but yeah. it's not. Not here in Colorado. Hours a day. No, it's just no. a regular. Yeah. But, um, so, hold on. Before we, before we go there. Talk about the guy. We've talked. To, we've had this conversation. So I was there. I was. I know what you're going at. So and when we get to the later topics or whatever, but there was a guy there that every day he, he's probably the greatest, one of the greatest people I ever met because, mm -hmm. um, so he was a five percenter. Okay. For those that don't know what that is, um, do your homework. But basically, it's it's a it's a faction, um, from the Nation of Islam, basically. Mm -hmm. The Nation of Islam is a faction from Islam mm -hmm. that is from America. They believe that that lost tribe came here, whoop -de -whoop, Malcolm X, all of them, mm -hmm. guy named Clarence X broke off. He started the 5% nation. So anyway, that's real big on the East Coast. This guy was in there and their big Why thing. Why was he in, in solitary? He killed somebody. Okay. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he was in there, but he did like 20 some years. And what's cool about him, he's the chaplain now at the Air Force Academy. <laughs> Interesting. So he changed his life. You know, he really did. That dude's, he's one of the best people I know in my life. Cool. Um, consider him a mentor. We talk once a month. Mm. So, but anyway, so. You was, you gonna tell his name or no? Give him a shout out. Who, oh, his name is Raphael. Hey, Raphael. Shout out to Raphael. <laughs> He'll probably watch this. Okay. That's cool. But, um. So he's in the He goes by a different name now, though. Okay. And I can't ever say it. Because they change their names, you know, and they go okay. to like an Arabic name. Mm -hmm. You know, and they talk. Like a bunch of clicks and stuff. And I'm like, I always give him a hard time. Hey, right? Raphael. <laughs> so, so he's in the cell next to you in solitary 18 hour, 23 hour day. Yeah. And he's every day he's asking me who you, who, who, how, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? What do you mean? Who am I? My name's AJ. Who are you? I'm AJ. Who are you? AJ, if I'm a salam, what's up? Like, what are you trying to ask me? Every day, every day. And, and you and, <laughs> You got nothing else to do. But, I didn't. I, yeah, and, and, but and, just play mental chess with this. And this, and that's what he was doing. And that, and and he would, and then he started telling me about this thing, knowledge itself, knowledge itself. These four corners of your square. Mm -hmm. He would always tell me that. I'm like, what do you mean? Like <clears throat> this four. You guys are. You can talk, but you can't see each other. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean? You know, I'd always ask him, and 
And then he he would break it down slowly over time, over time. Like, who are you? Who are you? Just more and more, like, asking me questions that I had to, like, got nothing but time to think about. So it's like, who is AJ? Mm. Where does AJ come from? What is AJ? Why is AJ here? You know, and he was real too because he was like, about? Yeah, yeah, like don't give me no bullshit excuses that oh I didn't have a dad and a mom and no, like that's not good enough. Mm. That's a simple excuse for everybody out there. You're better than that. Who are you? Mm. You know what I mean? Like where do you come from? That's interesting. But the, imagine and, that you weren't next to him. No, I know, and it's crazy because could your life be? It's a trip because when I look back at it, I, I there was another guy when I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. His name was Tim, and. If you're from up there in like Fort Collins, he was a, he kind of does what I do now, but he was more, he didn't have a gym or nothing, but he, he was like a gang advocate and he would be out in the streets and he, that's all he ever did mm. was, was went and look for all these gang kids and, and to reach him, talk reach to him. him middle of the night. Mm. He'd be out, you'd catch him at one, two in the morning. Mm. He'd just roll up on you. What's up? <laughs> you know, he's doing you're chilling. Right. Yeah. But it's like when he came around, everything stopped. Mm-hmm. Put this away real quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I talk to him now, and I'm like, you know how many people you probably, you know, just stopped from doing something crazy, mm-hmm. or maybe they were about to go, you know, shoot up something, or and then you showed up because we always had a Tim put everything away. Yeah, you no, know, we can't do this in front of Tim. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's interesting. Yeah, his presence alone, mm-hmm. and he was like real big on me. Mm. You know, and so, and it's crazy. So, um, I meet this guy. And I look back at my life and I'm like, he was another person where it's like, Tim was the first one. This is the second one. And he would, he got me onto this like path of just like really looking into me. And then the one thing that he really told me one time was once we got more into and we got a good understanding, he goes, now, AJ, I want you to look above. And he goes, and at the time I didn't believe in God. And Mm -hmm. I was like, forget that. Like if there was a God, I used to tell myself, I'm like, how? You don't like me. That mm-hmm. God must be white because I'm brown and that's why we go through all this shit. Interesting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he ain't he ain't for me. Mm-hmm. And everybody I ever met that was a so called Christian, well, if you don't go to if you don't change, you're going to hell. Mm. Well, cool. Shit, I'm already in hell, fool. Like, mm. ain't nothing different. So I never wanted to hear that shit. But this dude, a Muslim dude, mm-hmm. first of all, he first person to ever tell me about Christ. You know? Interesting. And people don't realize this that even though they're Muslim, they still believe in Christ. They just don't believe. He's the he, son of God. Right? That's the only thing. Mm-hmm. But he he would told me about him, mm-hmm. and he told me that he loves him and me. Mm. But he told me though he, he this is what he told me. He goes, look above. He goes, get right. And when you look in the mirror, get right. Mm. You find that that's the mirror. Interesting. He goes, and now that's you good. go talk to your homies. Mm-hmm. He goes, now that's peace. Mm. He goes, because you're peace here. You know what I mean? And it was the first time somebody's ever. I never heard that shit in my life. Mm-hmm. And it was like the beginning for me to like start being who I am now. It took a lot more years, but it was like the foundation. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was just like you, you needed that time to stop. Yeah. Like someone needed to grab you and stop yeah. you. And it was Say, there. What are you doing? Right. And it was. In it jail. wasn't the Department of Corrections, and no. it wasn't even this dude. Mm. It was obviously the Lord grabbing you and saying, right. "Hey, let's just hit the pause button real quick. Who right. are you? That's a great question." Right. What is he the same guy that said you guys are fighting for land that you don't even own? Yeah, he's the one that first told me, and it's funny because I heard it on a song later in life. But yeah, he so he told me, he goes, "What colors did you choose? You know, red and blue." Cool. <laughs> yeah, what a funny question. Right. What colors did you play? Red, white, and blue. What colors did you choose? Red and blue. What's left? White. They're laughing at you. Whoa. You know what I mean? They're laughing at you. You know, they're keeping you in this system. You want to be out of this system. You know, because then you go back to the private prisons, what we were talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, there's only like a handful of states. The rest are private. There's a quota that they got to be like right. 95% filled at all times. Why? Free labor. Mm. People don't realize that. That's real stuff. Mm. Interesting. You know, that's. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was the one that, that, so he asked you about fighting for, because that, that was a profound thing that, that you told me that he says, you're fighting. You you guys don't even own your your houses. No, that, that, that going on to like when he first told me about the, the red and blue, and then it's like, where because he he's where'd you grow up at? Well, the deltas are on the east side. But you you say you're a Solano. 
You know, I just talked to one of my good friends, uh, Shorty. We said the same. He said the same thing. He goes, AJ, I never even lived on the south side of town, <laughs> but yet we're Sureños. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of these Norteños don't even live. You know what I mean? On the north side, yeah. It's it's funny because my cousin that when I'm telling you about, he grew up across the street from Billy Martinez in Island Grove, but he's one of the main dudes. Sureños. Yeah, that's isn't the that north weird? side of town for them. <laughs> isn't that weird? Yeah. You know, and like that's what he said. You don't even own it. You don't own the block. You don't own nothing. You're you fighting can... for dirt you don't even own. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Interesting. And it's like that's you're saying that back then, and now people are so hip to it because people like they watch like Nipsey Hustle and you know, he bought that block in Compton. Mm. You know, so now that people are hip to that. Mm-hmm. But you know, back in the nineties and all those things a new people, idea. That was, yeah. I had never heard anything like that. Mm-hmm. You know, this whole knowledge. Again, itself. you had never examined what you were doing or why you were doing it. No. You were just doing it. Yeah. So, yeah, that was that, you know. Um, I know you wanted to talk about, like, jail and stuff, but it's like, you know, jail's jail, man. You guys all seen, people have seen the movies. That's mostly just what scary, it is. scary, mostly boring, would you say? That's a good question. Both. Never thought about it. Yeah. Yeah. When we went to Utah, it got scary because things started happening with the people from Cali, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and it got real again, you know. And so, like, you got laxed, almost in a sense, because nobody in Utah was, you know. But you no disrespect still- to anybody that's from Utah, but God bless <laughs> Mormon friends. <laughs> <laughs> but when them Cali fools went there, mm-hmm. they were with the business. Mm-hmm. And so now you, so you had to decide careful. what you were going to do. Yeah. yeah. And so, Did you have uh, gang tattoos already? Yeah, I've been tatted up since I was like twelve. Okay, you know, eleven or twelve. I so got when me. you walk, so when you walk around, in you're in prison. Those guys took one look at you and knew. A little bit, I, more so when, later because I got more, and, more and, like back then, like you couldn't get certain things. Now people just get tattoos and people tattoo things. Back then it was different. You know, you couldn't get this or that. It was more, um, if you want to say structured, uh-huh. you know, like almost you had to earn certain things. Mm-hmm. So like at the time I was still young, so I didn't have like certain things that I got now, you know, mm-hmm. but it took time to get, if that makes right, sense. I understand. Yeah. And so um, they knew though, bald head, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's a dead giveaway. Is that right? That's a dead I giveaway. Know that. Yeah. So if I you mean, have a bald head, you're. That that is a signal that you're a gang member. From no wonder people always lock their doors when I come by. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that's I'm always just like I think it looks better than the cul de sac. Yeah, no, anyway. it, <laughs> it's it's always you know, it's it's always been yeah a bald head you know it's, yeah that always re- represents a specific mm-hmm. things. So AJ, that's so interesting because you, you would know you would you would you would understand, but people wouldn't believe how often I get mad dogged. Yeah. How and you're tatted. Yes. I get stared down. The other day at Freddy's, I'm at Freddy's eating a hamburger. Mm-hmm. And a guy, older Chicano guy, uh, tattooed and all that, he kept walking by our table. And I told Diane, are you seeing this? Mm-hmm. And she goes, oh, yeah, I'm definitely seeing it. And so she's seen it so many times that she's she knows, like, yeah, this this happens to Angel. He gets stared down a lot. It's the reality. Yeah. So yeah. I have a hard time with it because I, I, I look, it's just... I jump in the shower and I can shave. I don't even use nothing. I just hot water. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it for so long, every other day. But there's times, like, I'll go through periods where. last time you had hair. Well, that's not so. You should grow out your hair. Let's just see what it looks like. My brother grew out his hair. It's so crazy. It's long now. He pulls it, you know, in the ponytail. It's so weird to see (laughs) his hair. Yeah. And I'm just. Because that was such a part of your look. Yeah. And he's tatted up all over his head and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, his whole head's tatted up. So to see him with hair is just so weird. It's funny. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I'll go through periods where I'll, like, fade it, mm-hmm. you know, just to try to be different. Mm-hmm. But it's like, man, it's and then even that's weird because I'm like, this is just not normal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's <laughs> let's go back to to Utah. So you, you're you in Utah, and then they put you in <clears throat> just a program, though, right? Yeah, so what happened was, like, some things happened with these fools from Cali. Um, yeah, it, um, some things happened. They were like, you got to, you got to figure something out. There's only one, one uh, facility in, in Utah mm-hmm. back then. 
Big Dave, what do you know? There was one back then. And um, I had a little cousin that went to a program. And um, it's a government program. Mm -hmm. And it was Job Corps. Right. Job Corps. And that's a, it's a government funded thing. And so people that don't know what that is, describe real quick what Job Corps is. I, I, I don't even know. It's, you can go for a trade school. It's basically a trade school. You can like go a for a trade school for troubled kids. Automotive, um, welding. <laughs> Um, nursing for the females, a couple other things like that. Carpentry. Carpentry stuff like that. Maybe barber, that kind no, of stuff. No, they don't do they that. Do no, it's just like automotive. And they actually have a good automotive program. Like, <coughs> they actually okay. do a good job with that. So you applied for Job Corps? Or they yeah, and they, no, they, uh, both. It was a combination of both. Because um, it has the biggest Job Corps in America. Okay. In, in Utah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a huge facility. Mm -hmm. So I got accepted into that. And then um, when I got there, they test you, mm -hmm. and little did I know I'm like a genius, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> a humble genius. <laughs> I always joke. No, that's I, so I I I I aced their test. It was okay. simple though. Like I think people probably just mess up on it on purpose. Like, but it was like so easy. Mm -hmm. They were like, "Well, we got a program that we'll pay for you to go to college." All right, cool. So you must have done well in the math, the English. Yeah, I've always been good at that. I've always read, so I've always okay. been able to do good things. Reading things. in prison still. Well, just uh, when I was a kid, even. Yeah. Was really. But, um, so yeah, got into that program. And they paid for me to go to school. Um, basically, did a four-year degree. You know, Weber State, right? Weber State. State. Home of the fighting. What's their mascot? Who knows? I, you know, I, I know the mascot of your like a I Man, look. Do you have a hoodie from there? Do I don't got nothing. All I got I'm is a potential kid and some. Potential <laughs> 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 like it was so the bad. Daughter. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. We were. It was funny because, <laughs> um, man, it was. It was. I don't even know how I got through it. To be so honest. you're going to Weber State. Yeah. We, well, so I was going as to as a, as a, ward of the state. Like you were. Yeah. Still in prison. Yeah. And I had to go there like a normal job. So I had to be there at 7.30 in the morning. And then I had to, you know, I could leave at like 5 or something. So basically, I... You were on campus with other yeah, students? Yeah, I had to take up... They, there was a bus that took us. How many of you were there? I don't... I don't even remember. Like, bus load? No. It was maybe like 10. Okay. 12, 13. Maybe. But like... Like, I know this sounds normal to you because <laughs> you lived it. But that sounds wild to me. A bus pulls up from the Department of Corrections. No, no, it wasn't the Department of Corrections. It was from the, from the, because I was already at the Job Corps. Oh, there. so you went to the Job Corps. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. That's okay, where okay, that goes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, did you have an orange jumpsuit on no, your backpack? <laughs> no. Your pencils? But it, it was weird because they had this guy, I forgot what they called him, but they would like follow. Okay. Make sure you were there and stuff. Make sure you're doing They what you're knew that, doing. everybody knew that we were there somewhere else. Yeah. But. Did you wear, so you wore regular clothes? Yeah, but that's, that time I was. Regular clothes. Normal self. You know, it was funny because I there was a guy, there was these two guys, and I'm they're one of my closest friends now. Mm -hmm. They're both from Cali. Mm -hmm. They both got accepted into the same program. Okay, and we became good friends after we got out of the system, mm -hmm. and now we're like to this day mm -hmm. solid friends. What's their names? Marco and Pancho. Marco and Pancho. Shout out. Uh, Manny. Manny was the third one that came Manny. later. I know. So they're yeah, they're they're good. But um, so you went so for four years you were in no so two years two years okay yes yeah, so, so that's what I'm saying so a normal load is what fifteen fourteen credits yeah but we had to be there for eight nine hours a day like a job so we had to do double so we basically had to do double the load because we were forced to do this so Manny no no Marco was doing the same thing I was doing and then Manny I think did automotive so to finish a degree in two years a college degree it's 120 credits it was almost like it was closer to three years. For okay. me, so you're still taking at least 20 some credits a semester. Yeah, it was a lot. 15 is a full time load. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. Man. It was crazy. So you're doing homework all night. No, I, yeah, but I had, I had met somebody that helped me with that. So it was okay. good. <laughs> but she helped me out a lot. It was crazy. She, she was cool. Shout out to Amy. 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 She's a good lady. But um, so yeah, me and Marco went through that program. It was, and so we went uh, engineering degree. Mm -hmm. So, um, composite emphasizing composites. Okay. And so, but I never did anything with it until 2017. So you have a degree in what is it? Engineering. Mechanical engineering. Me mechanical. Mechanical engineering. Yeah. From Weber State. Mm -hmm. But you don't even know the mascot. 
No. I know they got a good basketball team, though. I'm gonna buy you a jersey or something. Damian Lillard, yeah. Yeah. Damian Lillard. I was just going to say that. But, like, back in the day, like, I don't know if you follow basketball, but they were, like, one of the Cinderella teams. And, like, kind of like Gonzaga was. Mm. But now they, they've been established. They're like, building another. Yeah. So, wow, that's cool. Yeah. So, so you got your degree from there. Got my degree from there. And I got to go home. Uh-huh. And then I went right back to the same shit. <laughs> <laughs> I got home and <laughs> it was what just year like, was this? Uh, 2008. Okay. Yeah. And went right back to the same stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was just, uh, it just like went more. Mm-hmm. Um, the cousin I keep mentioning, um, without mentioning his name, like he was back in prison for a little bit. And then he basically just kind of, here, you're going to, handle things out in the streets. Hmm. You know, I'm so like, all right, cool. So I was kind of like running the neighborhood out here. Mm-hmm. And so I just, and it was a trip. So like, I come back home. Well, two things happened. So I got to like say this, like two things happen. I come back home. Um, the music starts happening. So I did music from then on okay. for a long time. You rap, sing? No, I just, Produce? I was DJing and I had connections that could help. And so I met a couple of people and I helped DJ them, but I also helped them get to we travel the world, mm. you know, like just cause some of the people that I knew and met like doing what I used to do mm-hmm. kind of set us up over here. Okay. So that happened. But then my kids, I got a phone call one day when I was still in Utah, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, dang, I never really told, talk about this one. Mm-hmm. Um, so my, I got a call saying that my son um, was gonna die, hmm. and that he was that he had gotten hurt by a guy that his mom was with. Hmm. Um, How old was he? He was probably like six, okay, five, five or six. Mm-hmm. So that was a Thursday. Got to Colorado on a Friday. Go to the hospital. My son has a bruise from shoulder to shoulder all the way down his back. Mm. Find out that this guy, he was protecting his mom because he was beating her. And this guy was like a rug Mm. against the wall. My daughter, she's a year younger. Um, She's in the hospital. And um, her Stuff's all messed up because he hit her. And uh, it was bad, you know? I didn't even know my daughter. I knew my son. That was the only one I was around. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Let me see. Tuesday, we had court. The judge was like, we're going to give you these kids. I'm not ready for these kids. You are still in school? I know. I had just finished. I was literally, like, transitioning. Mm-hmm. I was going to get ready to be coming home. But I wasn't coming up, but I already was back in the mix of things. Like mm. it, was, it was, I was, I was out of control, like, especially then. Like it was just more. Mm-hmm. And um, they're like, you're gonna have these kids. And my, I was with this lady for a long time, and she's the one that was like, I'll take them. I got you. Mm. And I'm like, man, all right. And um, <clears throat> so they came, and so that happened. But then the other thing that happened was when I came back. Finally, when I moved back. This guy started showing up at my house, and he's in a wheelchair, and it was so weird. Remember, we tell you like Tim was there. Dude, the the Muslim dude mm-hmm. was in, in in prison, and then this dude starts showing up, mm. and um, I know this is gonna sound horrible, but I had some other girl that I was seeing that when I I had like two different houses, <laughs> but a lot she of love to give. Yeah, it was just a different life, right? But she was like, AJ, this guy keeps showing up. Who is he? I don't know. Says he knows you. Or says that he heard about you. That he wants to get to know you. I didn't know he was in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And I finally meet him. He's in a wheelchair. And I'm like, well, this guy's harmless. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. He's not going to hurt me. (laughs) No. So he keeps coming and keeps coming. We talk, we talk. And then, you know, I'm asking him, like, what's up? Like, what do you want? Yeah. I just want to be your friend. I just want to be your friend. I noticed that he has a Bible with him all the time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, like little stickers on his thing. 
even now, because he's still obviously in a wheelchair, but um, those stickers are like crosses and little fish. And, yeah, all that. You knew something was up, yeah. Well, what's up, fool? You trying to preach or what? Oh, I'm here. He's like, Jesus loves you. He kept saying that over and over. That's all I need to say. All right, cool. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and then he would keep coming. And then eventually, I just told him, I was like, well, he's cool. He, and he was a cool dude. So mm -hmm. what's up, man? Like, I know you want to say something. And he told me the best thing ever, man. Like, he goes, I'm here. So mm -hmm. God's here. I don't need to preach to you. Mm. I'm here. I'm here because he told me to be. What do I need to preach to you? Again, Jesus loves you. Mm -hmm. I'm here. All right. That's it. That's it. Mm. That's what God's all about. Interesting, yeah. His name? Kavika. Kavika what? Cornelius. Kavika Cornelius. Shout out. Yep. He has a church in Loveland. <laughs> but he starts saying all that. And so then I was like, man, I, I dig that. Because everybody else is like, you're going to hell. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then they're just trying to shove this stuff down your throat. Yeah. You know? Like, you know what's up. You're a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I've been around a little bit of it. Yeah. And then he starts telling me about, this. so as we start talking, he starts telling me this thing about grace. This is where my life changed. Mm. You know? Like, this is, now we're fast forwarding time, time, mm -hmm. time, right? I'm still like a mess. Some, you know, you go back to the street life, people are getting killed. People around me were getting killed. My dad, you know, was dead by then. My brother was going to prison. Like, um, I was still in the mix. It was it was bad. Mm -hmm. I should have went back to prison. You know, it was just it was it was rough. It was it was everything that like I said in the movies. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and this guy's showing up, and this guy's showing up in the middle of all that, and then he starts telling me about grace, mm -hmm. and then he told me one day I go ask him I go what does that mean, you know what is like, you know like grace like a favor. He's like, yeah, it's like unmerited favor, but he's like, but Jesus paid for this. So like, you don't have to really do nothing no more. Like this like works. Right. Trying to you do enough to, good things to get to heaven. You yeah. don't have to do it. You know, and then, you know, he told me the best thing ever, you know, he's like, you know, in the beginning that it was, the word was there. And then, you know, you fast forward, the word became flesh. That was this person. Jesus. Yeah. So the work's done. Just mm. believe in it. You know, and then I, I told you one time we started. Well, I'll tell you a story. Some people got killed. And um, I know, like, you always tell me it's like, it's just another day. But it really, like, it was just, it was so wild. Like, mm -hmm. some people got killed. Hey, it's, it's, this fool got shot over here. One of your homies killed this fool over here. Things are just happening. Yeah. All right, cool. Someone wants to get revenge. It's back and forth, All right? That, yeah. Well, I'm calling shots for the neighborhood. Call everybody up. Hey, we got to meet over here. You know, certain park in Greeley. As I'm going there, I'm driving, and I'm like hearing this voice. Like me and you are talking, right? Mm -hmm. I, think I told you the story. I don't know. I don't I think remember I, this. This is how I, this is how I, <clears throat> this is like the encounter with God, you mm -hmm. know, I call it. <clears throat> Start hearing this voice. This chick's with me, not my ex, but the other one that where I had the other mm -hmm. place. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, yo, do you hear that? She's like, you're tripping. And mind you, I've never been one. I've never gotten high. I've never been drunk in my life. I, all the BS that I've done, I've always been sober. You know, and that just goes back to from being a kid, like from all the stuff my dad did. Mm, interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I, I just needed to be in control. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm not tripping. So you never wanted that part of that life. <laughs> no. Yeah. But I'm telling her, I'm like, I'm not tripping. You're not hearing that? She's like, no. But I'm hearing this voice and it's talking to me. Damn, so we get to this place, get out the car, and I'm like tripping. I'm early, but I'm like, man, I I'm I know I heard it. Mm -hmm. Get out. And then I'm like, there's there's somebody there. This person like, is talking to me, right? And now. they're talking to me and they're telling me some things. And they're telling me things that you had to have been there. Mm. You know, your dad stabbed you, but you're alive because I helped you. Oh my god. Your dad. When you when you were surviving out there on them streets, those rocks that you guys found, we I, I led you guys. Mm. I'm now go be who you supposed to be. And like if it's like if like if they were taking off this shirt, 
you know, it's like, it's kind of like what happened. And like, I just felt like this, like almost like a hug, you know? Mm. And it was like, in the midst of all this chaos, you know, a few people had, three people had gotten killed. There was like the most peace I ever felt in my life. Mm. And it was at that moment. And I, I remember telling this chick, I'm like, this is, the only person I know is Kavika. Mm-hmm. So I call Kavika. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> you're not gonna believe this. But he starts laughing at me. Uh-huh. He starts laughing. I'm like, yo, bro, this is serious shit, man. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Why this are you isn't laughing? Funny. This is not I'm funny. Freaking out right now. Yeah. I'm freaking out. And mind you, Kavika's never preached to me. Mm-hmm. Never. He's never like came at me with the Bible and did all I this. I meet Kavika. I've never met him. Shout out. But to he you. just like AJ. Like you just had the encounter. Mm. You just, you just, he calls it the bona fide Jesus. You just had to kind of with that. And then he told me a story about this guy named Elijah. I didn't know who this was. He goes, hey, man, he goes, there, when you get a chance, I'll show it to you. But in the Bible, there's this thing, this guy, he's in by himself. These people are coming to get him. God tells him to go look, and there's angels all around. Mm, right, yeah. You're safe. Mm. Here's your Elijah story. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're good. So all these people come, my brother, a couple of my homies. And I'm just like, yo, like, you know what? I just told him flat out as soon as I got there. I'm good. Whatever you guys want to do, I'm good. What do you guys want to do something? Handle it now. One of the homies that just got out of prison just shook my hand. Cool. Just don't come back. My brother shook my hand. They didn't talk to me though for like a year. So you were telling them, I'm not, I'm out. I'm not doing this. Just I'm just not dealing with this situation. It wasn't like fully like out out like that in a sense, but like I was that situation. It was like because something just happened. I knew something. Yeah. This voice, this yeah. encounter, this thing. God is real. Something just happened. I didn't know how to explain it. So I go and I and I had some dope at the house. Flushed it. Yeah. Had some guns at the house. They're gone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? This chick that was over here on this house, she's gone. Go to my chick and I'm like, look, like something's going on. My son, when he was six months old, fell and he was blind. Mm-hmm. Again, Kavika is the only person I know. So I start hanging out with Kavika every single day. And I told you this, like, first thing he told me, when you read the Bible, AJ, in the Old Testament, all the way up to the Acts is Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is still the Old Testament. You got to be able to see that it points to Jesus. When you read it from Acts, it points back to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've never heard anybody say it, but it's an interesting idea. Yeah, yeah, and it, but, it, but to me, but yeah, I agree. The whole Bible is the story. It's of this Jesus. love story, right? Yes. And to me, it just made sense. So I was with him every single day. You know what I mean? And I think I told you, this dude goes around telling people, "Hey, I'm going to school to learn how to hear God's voice. Let me practice." Mm-hmm. And he just starts, you know. What do you call that? Like prophesying? Prophesying or, or yeah. Yeah, he's, he's really into like spiritual things like that, mm-hmm. you know? About a month after all this situation, my son's blind. He's always holding on to me right here. We go <laughs> to his church finally. Never been to church. We go to his church and they're like praying in tongues. Okay. That scared us. Heck out of me. Mm-hmm. I ain't never seen that before. Yeah. That was so different. And people were the expression of the Holy Spirit. Oh my goodness. And they were falling. Uh-huh. I was, I'm like, what is wrong with these people? To the point, like, we were there for like only 20 minutes. You're like, this I is looked at my son. I was like, we got to go. Like, this is <laughs> devil shit. Like, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I never heard of this uh-huh. type of stuff, you know? So we leave it in this some random dude. I've never seen him. He comes. That's, is his name Angel? That's my son's name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good Who are you? Hey, man, I've been having a dream for like a month. Remember a month ago, this other stuff happened. I just knew I was going to see your son. Hmm. I just don't, I, I don't know why. I just want to pray for him. He doesn't know nothing about him. So I was praying for my son. Dude, it was crazy because he didn't say nothing weird. I'm like, dear God, that's all. Mm-hmm. My son starts tripping out. And he's like, yeah, there's something like touching me right now. We're like, let this fool finish, you know what I mean? So this dude puts his hand back on his shoulder, I remember, and like nothing weird, no crazy yeah, words, yeah. nothing. Just, Dear God. That's all he gets out. Mm-hmm. My son starts freaking out again. And he's just like going like this, dude. So he's 
like six years old at this point. Six or seven or something like that. Like, or yeah, because that's the time I went, but he was probably like seven or eight. Mm -hmm. And he's like, dad, dad, dad. And he's like, something's like pushing me right here. And he's, he's mine. Dude, he starts bolting down the thing. And I'm like, dang. He's not hitting nothing. He's not nothing. He's fine. I tripped out on this. Mm -hmm. I went home. <laughs> Next morning, he's watching TV. He's just staring at it. I'm like, what do you see? And he's Dora, you know, boots. He's explaining what he's watching. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm in tears. Mm. I'm like, you see it? Color of the sky. Blue. Down. Call Kavika up. Kavika. And he's like, um, well, I told you this is real. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, did he say that exact sentence? <laughs> he didn't say it like that. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I told you God's real. Yeah. Go to the doctor. They're like, yo, he got all the scars still. Let's see. Interesting. My son's 18 now. Played varsity football. He had over 50 fights boxing, never lost. One of the best wrestlers. He won state a few times. Mm -hmm. Like, before he'd, like, middle school stuff, he didn't mm -hmm. wrestle as a high school. But, I mean, all these things. Mm -hmm. But I got the records and everything to show that he's legally blind. Like, wow. that's, he, he was blind completely in one eye. Wow. You know, just got to, like, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Hard to deny. You can't deny it. Yeah. Nobody can ever tell me. I told I mean, you. This there's week. obviously a story here of God is pursuing you. Yeah, right? it's it's anybody listening can yeah. identify like yeah, God is. You know, and I and I told, and I've always told you like Kavika always tells tells me like God had to be like like for I'm here, like wake your ass up. You know what I mean? Like I'm here for like what's up? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and all these things happen. You know, because after that, like, Kavika sent me to different places with some of his friends, and they're doing the same thing that he does. And these people are, like, praying for people. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm seeing things that, like, like to me is unbelievable. Like, I I never even heard of this. Like, you read that stuff in the Bible, you know, and Jesus does all these miracles. Mm -hmm. That's just not real. <laughs> it is, though. And I've seen it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? My son, he's, that's living proof. My son's 18. He tells me all the time that I want to go to church. I never take them though. <laughs> <laughs> We've had this conversation. <laughs> but if you ask my son though, yeah, he's been to our church. He's, he's been, been here, to your yeah. church. You've been here. Yeah, yeah. But it's like you ask him though, and he, he'll tell. He's not afraid to tell people. God touched me. He tells that to everybody to ask. You know, yeah, not afraid of that. So, but yeah, it, it, you know, it's it's a trip though because it's like so we could we could go a lot of places. <clears throat> all of them. Oh yeah, but let me let me let me steer it one place. Um. If you could talk to 13-year-old AJ, right? Because there's there the, the gym is full of them. So yeah. you run a boxing program. Yeah. Very successful boxing program. You have some national champs. Yeah. Very successful travel, all that. So you've got a you're surrounded by 13-year-old AJ. Right. Right. And but if you could talk to 13-year-old AJ about life, what would you tell him? What Slow down. Say? Slow down. You know, I tell the kids all that all the time, slow down. I'm trying to be men. You know. Yeah. Still a boy. Slow down. This this ain't the it's a marathon. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of life. Mm. You know. All this stuff that's happening. I tell you know, we just had a kid that got killed. Right. That was a huge kid thing. From the club got just got killed, yeah. Just got killed. Fifteen years old. Mm -hmm. You know, that could have been us. Mm. You know. The best thing you can tell them is slow down. You know, like mm -hmm. you, you're, you're trying to move like men, but you you don't even wash your own clothes. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you don't you don't even you don't even know how to start an Excel bill under your name, mm -hmm. but you're trying to be men. Yeah. You know. Slow down. There's a time for that. There's a time, time for it. Time. Right now, it's time to be a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, enjoy yeah. that shit. You're 14, 15, 13. Ride your bike. Ride your bike. You know? Mm -hmm. It's a trip, man. It's like, you, there's a bunch of these kids. Yeah. That killing, like, it just, 
It's not stopping. It's it's not. Yeah. And that one hit home. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That one that one hit home hard. Mm-hmm. It's like, what do you do though? Yeah. You know? So that's the that's the best thing I I tell these kids all the time. Slow down. Yeah. You know, just figure it. There out. Is, there is definitely that feeling of, um, you know, you we could look at it and say, God, why don't you do something? Right? Like that'd be an easy answer, and and God's an easy one to blame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he doesn't defend himself. Mm-hmm. So you can say, God, why why did you let this happen? Why did you do this? Why don't you do something? I, as I'm looking at this situation, I'm looking at you, knowing you, we're friends. I know what you do with these kids. And I think to myself, God is doing something. He sent AJ. Mm-hmm. He, he rescued AJ. He took him off this path. And now God using AJ. And we might not catch them all, unfortunately. No. But we're, we're going to get a lot of them. Yeah, you know I mean, mean that's that's the that's the goal, right? right yeah, yeah. It's, I'd love to catch them all. I just don't know if that's re- reality, if that's realistic. But I, I want to. I'm trying. You know, here at my church, I'm trying. Right. But we're gonna get a lot of them. Yeah. So that's that's all we can do. Yeah. We had a conversation the other day, and you told me that story. What was it the, about the starfish? The starfish. Yeah. Yeah. I thought. I mean, I've been thinking about that every day. Mm, good. You know, because yeah. that's where when that murder happened, mm-hmm. and like it's been it's been messing with me. Yeah. You know, I just feel like I'm not doing enough. Right. You know, and there's people around me. I just feel that could do more, mm-hmm. you know, because if there's a, imagine if there was 10 more angels. Right. You know, more people doing what I'm doing. Yeah. But it's like, there's not. But there's not. You know, but, but here we are. Yeah. And, and God, and it, God has given, this is something that I would say to you. I would say to everyone, uh, this has helped me. God has given you everything you need to do everything he wants you to do today. And so whatever he, you know, whatever he wants AJ to do, whatever he wants Angel to do, he's given me all the resources and all the time and all the connections to do everything he wants me to do today. Right. And everything else, that's not, that's not for, that's not my, my responsibility. Right. He just told me to do what I'm supposed to pick up that starfish and throw it in the water. Yeah. And that's what he has for me today. I want to, I want to get all of them. God, believe me, God is concerned about every one of these kids. Yeah, no, I, after that conversation yeah. we had, I, I, I really been thinking about that. And it's like, you know, you know what I mean? I'll put Kavika. that poem in the in the show notes or something. Yeah, that starfish poem. Yeah, and I talked to Kavika about it, you know. And um, like I'm in the music so much. And I heard something and it just like, this guy says, you know, he's just like, the only thing that's different for me is I just didn't quit. Mm-hmm. There's nothing special about me and I just kept going. Right, yeah. You know, it was all the same obstacles. Mm-hmm. You know, come from the hood, come from, I just right. didn't quit. That's all I, that's, that's it, after yeah. talking to you, it's just like, man, like, it's all we do. It's got to keep so here's going. A, here's a, two questions I ask everybody. All right. So drink of this. maybe I'll have a, uh, we'll have to have you back so we could talk more about boxing and about what you do with the kids and all that. But two questions. One, uh, are you, are you successful? And what does that word mean? What does that word success mean to AJ? Because you could be pursuing mechanical engineering, be making a lot of money as an engineer. I'm, I'm the first person to admit that when I looked at you, I I didn't think mechanical engineering. <laughs> I'm a genius. So it's like your weak jab. You know what I mean? You swear oh it's there. God. Weak jab. <laughs> the thing is, go when you're talking about me. <laughs> um, am you know I success? I mean? So, are, yeah. What does that word success mean to you right now? Because when you were younger, it sounds like it meant drugs, women, Money. being in control. Right. Power, right? Those are the things that every right. young guy wants. And it's so weird now that I'm in my spot. I don't even want to be seen. Hmm. I don't even go to the store. I get everything ordered. You know what <laughs> I mean? It, and it's, it's so weird how so things... So many people are like that. I like going to the store. I hate it. I hate it. You just want to be... I found peace, man. Mm, good. You know? I like that. My friend way. Brenda tells me all the time, find peace at home. Mm. And she told me that like three years ago. And I did. Mm. And now I just I, I never want to leave. So what does success look like to you? Success looks... To me, I... You know... First of all, am I successful? Yeah, hell yeah, I am. I'm alive. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I'm happy. Not in prison. I'm not in prison. I'm not dead. I'm, you know, I'm a, mm. my son loves me. My daughter loves me. Mm, that's good. It, my son thinks I'm Iron Man. He thinks I'm all these superheroes. Mm. That dude, you know, when mm-hmm. he looks at me, he's like, like, damn. What a different relationship but you have with your son. Right. Compared to what? Right. You with your father. And even my daughter, you know, you know, just all the, the things I did to women and how I treated them mm. to have my daughter look to me in the same way. Like she loves me. Like I'm the best thing there is in her life. Mm, that's 
good. And so that to me, like, am I successful? Yeah. Mm. How do I measure that? I care less what you think, what he thinks, what anybody thinks. I don't have, you know, I got some money. Sure. You know, I did things right now, but I go home and but that's not it. No, I go home and my, the, the, the two people, my kids, the ones, you know, mm-hmm. they think I'm right. You know, these people, like they, that's all that matters. What, who else? What else you want? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I feel like I am. <laughs> right. Good. Yeah. And then, you know, when you go further, it's like the kids, you know, the kids at the gym, <clears throat> they think I'm the, 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 like they love me. You've seen it. Like those kids. And I'm not trying to like, oh, yeah. right. They surround you. They love you. They, that's my, those are my dogs. Like, you know, I'm the, I'm the most, um, consistent, um, loyal and just like, right person yeah they tell me all the time we don't ever see you anywhere we don't see you when my mom and dad are posting their videos on at the bars or right doing yeah. that. do i have a drink every once in a while sure i have one drink i've never been drunk in my life i'll have a beer once in a while. But you'll never see me at a bar you know what i'm saying right. like you'll never see me at the club you're that consistent i'm everything that i needed in in their lives yeah yeah you're that guy that's solid yeah in their lives yeah you know so it's like there's success mm-hmm. you know it's I mean? good yeah and then it's like when you go for Garp Moore, it's like I got Lopez. I took her out. You know, like so she was getting abused. Mm. Now she's on W Camp. You know, her life changed. You know, she told me just a What's month that ago. W Camp? World Class Athlete Program. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? So she told me about a month ago when she got, finally got accepted for 100%. Gave me the biggest hug. Mm. I love you. Like, AJ, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Mm. My mom, my dad's in prison. My mom's. You've been here for four years, fool. Yeah. Love you for this. Ever. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, psh, I care less what anybody else thinks. Right. You know what I mean? Let, Let them down. talk, man. Yeah. Let them talk. Who cares? That's what it is. So, yeah, yeah. success. Hell yeah. We're successful. Last question. Where have you, and you've already kind of answered this in a number of ways, but where have you seen God in all of it? <clears throat> I mean, I know where I see it. I see God. I struggle with it though. You know, me and you talk about this. This is why me and you get together outside of and talk. Mm -hmm. Because that's the one thing I struggle with. Right. You know what I mean? We didn't get to talk about it, but my son died. Like, where was God at? You have all these good things and my son died. Mm -hmm. You know, my oldest son just went through what he went through, you know, about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Where were you? Why do you allow this stuff? But like you said, like, everybody wants to blame. You ask me all these. It's easy to blame, yeah. Yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, but but when I sit back and look at it, it's like. People are going to trip out hearing you say this because. It seems so obvious, right? Oh, I struggle with it. Yeah. That's why my son asks me oh, every week, let's go to church. Mm-hmm. I tell him no because in my head, I'm like, I'm not, I know he's there. Nobody can tell me that it's, he's not real. Right, yeah. But I still have like these things. I'm like, I, my son does. We're all on a journey, man. Yeah. And I, so I struggle with it. Yeah. You know, but I, mean, I know he's there. I know on he's hand, there. You're friends with probably the coolest pastor in Greeley. I'm thinking, I think. Best jab. Kavika is good in this area considered greedy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just, I'm just playing. <laughs> no, but I mean, and, and, again, and again, but who knows, who knows why God brought me into your life? Right. Who knows why God brought you into my Vice life? Vice versa. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's pursuing us both and he's right. using both of us to push us back towards him. You know what I mean? Right. And even, you know, those, there are people listening to us right now that have been through similar awful things but you know that same where was god and where and i i would tell them the same thing i've told you we have a choice we can either run from him or we can run to him kavika just told me this the other day when when the, when the little guy got killed you know because i'm i'm helping his mom and that's horrible right yeah but kavika told me aj you remember like i just said it a little bit ago remember i told you about the bible thing mm-hmm. he goes this life Jesus. he goes this life thing he goes it's the same thing he goes, when everything's going good and you guys are winning and you guys are doing all this, point over there. Mm. He goes, here's the hard part. When all this shit's going crazy, there's no point there. Yeah. And I was like, why though? I'm like, how is that? How do you equate that? And he was just like, well, look what he went through. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what look Jesus who, went through, yeah. Look who set him up. Look who, you know what I mean? He was all by himself. Man. All by himself. And I'm like, damn, Kavika. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he said, I'm in a wheelchair, AJ. I'm paralyzed. Because people are walking because of me. Or not because of me, but because I prayed for him. Because yeah. I took the time to pray for him. Mm-hmm. You know, same thing. I've People have 
came into this relationship because of me, but I'm in a wheelchair. Interesting, yeah. You know, how do you think I feel? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when he told me that, I was like, man. And it's just like a constant reminder. When me and you talked, you know, the other day, like I need, like you told me something. I'm like, so yeah, like God's there. You know, He's pursuing all of us, man. <laughs> right. Well, with that, on that note. Thank you. Thanks for being here. I'd like yeah. to do it again. We'll get into the boxing stuff more. And for sure. I can maybe do a, a demo of my jab. A tutorial. That'd be probably big. Yeah, a tutorial. I'll probably go viral. Your back's messed up though, so you don't want to. It's getting better. <laughs> <laughs> I can't twist too much. Thank you. All Thanks right, man. Thanks. It. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode.